Good afternoon, good morning, and good night. This is the Daily Horizon View, and it's the 8th of the 4th. This is our top five exchange traded funds on the ASX, and today's spotlight is OOO, and that is the Beta Shares Crude Oil Index ETF, and that's uh, currency hedged and synthetic. Just skip to the end if you just want to see the info on the ETF. So a quick overview here. Um, market was up 0.64% and closed at 63.10. Materials, healthcare, energy, consumer discretionary, real estate, industrials, utilities, information technology, consumer staples, all in the green. We had gold, silver, platinum uh, up, and crude oil and petroleum products mostly up as well. So for the top five percentage rises, we had OO, which is our spotlight today, and that was up 2.39%. On some reasonable volume. Uh, we had QR, ATP, MPT, which is the ETS Physical Platinum ETF. Then we had EPT, MPM, which is our physical metals baskets. Uh, then we had to finish up OZR, which is the State Street Spider S&P ASX 200 resources. Moving on. Top five percentage falls. CNU, QFN, CETF, HJPN, MVB. So... China New was down 2.55%. Not reasonable fall, but not too much. Quite a lot of volume, so not sure if that means anything or not, but it could do. Um, then we had QFN, which is our beta shares a uh, S and P ASX 200 financials. Most people know CETF, uh, HJPN. Is a bear shares wisdom tree a Japan ETF BVB is the Van Eck Vectors Australia Banks. Our top five dollar rises IJH, SPY, IVV, ETP, MPM. EPT, MPT, uh, so IJH is the iShares S&P Midcap 400, SPY is the State Street Spider S&P 500 ETF, IVV is the iShares S&P 500 ETF, and the other ones are our physical metals, so there's a bit of a um, focus on uh, the US market with those uh, ETFs, top three anyway. Top five dollar falls, CETF, IAA, IKO, IHOO, and QFN. Uh, CETF is the Van Eck Vectors China AMC MSCI 300 ETF, which is a mouthful. Uh, IAA is the iShares Asia 50, which is much nicer to say. IKO is the iShares MSCI South Korea ETF. IHOO is the iShares Global 100 Australian hedged ETF. 
and QFM for, as we mentioned before, excuse me, is the beta shares S&P ASX 200 financials. All low volume on those ones. Top five number of trades, expecting to see all the usual suspects. BAS, VGS, IVV, IAF, and VTS. No strange ones there. Tra number of trades looks about standard. Uh, we had the top five number by volume. C new MVS VAS VGS. Uh, usual suspects there. Moving on to the top five by volume. VGS VAS China new. STW, MVS, um, pretty low day on the value stakes, nothing over 7 mil. We saw, so uh, MVS is the Vanex Vectors Small Companies Masters ETF, which is a new one. I haven't seen that before, I don't think. Uh, and that tracks returns of the market vector, uh, market vectors Australia small cap dividend payers index. So the spotlight is on the B shares crude oil index ETF, and that's currency hedged and synthetic. Provides investors with a simple way to take a view on oil prices. So if you're interested in oil. This is quite a simple way to uh, take advantage of that. So it aims to track the performance of the index before expenses and fees, yada yada. Uh, so it provides exposure to crude oil futures with a currency hedge against movements in Australia and US dollar exchange rates. Uh, so access. So you can um, take advantage of the movement in crude oil futures by simply buying one share, which is one e that, e that ETF. So you don't have to do multiple trades or look at different instruments. Uh, it's quite simple and it's quite convenient. So reduce currency risk if you buy this because it's um, hedged. Uh, Korea commodities uh, globally are priced in US dollars. This fund's US dollar uh, exposure is hedged to the Australian dollar. 100% uh, backed by cash held by third party custodian, so it's pretty safe. So it gives you optionality for your portfolio diversification. So commodities historically have a low correlation with other assets. Uh, liquidity, you can trade it just like any other stock. Uh, net asset value was $17.24, so it's trading above the net asset value at $17.58. Management fee is 0.69%. It's not too bad. Distribution frequency annually in July. Uh, the dividend yield is 1.6%. But yeah, uh, investors who want exposure to the oil sector and don't want the hassle of analyzing specific companies could consider this ETF. So, you know, I think the ETF might be a good tool to have in the toolkit if you want to be exposed to commodities. However, uh, yeah. I'd be doing some more research because it is a synthetic and I'm a little bit nervous about synthetics. Uh, other ones to take a look at to get commodity exposure might be QAG, which is the agricultural uh, ETF, and um, Perth Mint Gold, PM Gold, not P 
PG gold, which is a mistake. It's P gold, PM gold. So I definitely do some more research on that one because it's a synthetic. So performance on this ETF isn't great either. So it was uh, opened in November 2011. Hasn't really performed that well historically. So a standard little disclaimer, we're always um, producing information for basic knowledge and then we need to go out and do our own research. So we're trying to crack your financial sky by giving you the tools and the information to become confident and be able to make your own assessments on the investments. Um, do further research yourself. So if you like it, give us a thumbs up. And if you even like it even more, give us a subscribe and also um, leave a comment. Uh, let us know what other ETFs you'd like to have a quick look at and we can get there. Thanks. Bye.